What's up guys? So as promised in my fuel filter installation video, I am going to take that fuel filter apart and try to figure out how it works. So if you want to come with me over here, let's walk over to the sink. My original plan was to just soak that fuel filter in water, keep it filled up, and then blast into it with a cutting wheel. After reading some stories about people cutting into fuel tanks and them exploding and getting their heads chopped off. I decided to err on the side of caution. So I'm just going to fill this thing up with water and cut into it with a hacksaw. Let's try to get a cross section view of this fuel filter and then we'll take it to paper and try to figure out how this thing works, do some calculations. Uh, so let's get into it. your pressure regulator which I started cutting through on accident when I was trying to cut it open the first time. So let's get into here and see what's going on. Bam, exactly what I thought was in here. A little spring and a diaphragm. And then this little thing fell off before, which was seated in here, I believe. Started up Fusion 360, I figured I'd model these in CAD rather than drawing them out by hand. Basically just taking pictures of the cross section after I cut them apart, tracing that outline and then revolving the sketch. So I've got the filter housing all modeled up, got a cross section view so I can put in the pressure regulator and the components inside the pressure regulator assembly. Again, got a cross section view and 
sketching it up and then revolving it. Sketching from an actual cross section is pretty neat because you can take the the measurements from the real world and scale them up and then as long as you follow the outline everything should be proportional. So I've got the components of the pressure regulator pretty much modeled up and now I just wanted to change the colors of all the different components so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay so now that we have the CAD all drawn up we are looking at a cross-section view right now. Before we go into the actual calculations I'd like to go over all of these components uh, just so that we're on the same page of what everything is. So starting off with this pink component I'm going to be calling that the filter housing. The filter housing has this fuel outlet, the fuel inlet, this fuel return, and the alignment peg. If you remember from my fuel filter installation video, we did use this peg to make sure the filter was in the right orientation. And if you didn't see that, I'm going to have that linked up in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Moving on, we have the fuel filter represented as this yellow cylinder. You caught that while I was taking that out. There was a plastic annular disc on either end of the fuel filter. So I've got that represented there too. Moving back over here, we've got the pressure regulator assembly, which is comprised of a few different parts. This blue housing, which I'm calling the pressure regulator housing. We've also got this white component here, which I'm calling the plug. Behind the plug, we've got um, this red disc, which is actually a flexible diaphragm. This diaphragm is a circle with a hole in the middle of it. And that circle opens up to what I'm calling the piston, which is right behind here represented in green. It's not what you'd think of a conventional piston. The shaft of this piston is hollow, and there's a hole opening up to that hollow portion of the shaft. This is going to allow fuel to flow through it, and we'll look at that in a second. The last component on here that I didn't represent just because I didn't want to draw it up in CAD, is the spring. And there's a spring in here seated on the inside of the piston and on the back side of the housing. So in this orientation, the spring is actually pushing the piston to the right. So we've got the components all labeled. What do they do? There's really two scenarios that I've come up with that are going to help explain the functionality of the pressure regulator and the fuel filter. But first we have to know that the rated maximum pressure for this filter is 6.6 .6 bar. That means we've got a maximum of 6.6 .6 bar in this portion of the fuel filter and going downstream. With that said, if the, what we're gonna call pressure in the filter, if that pressure is less than 6.6 .6 bar, we're gonna get fuel from the fuel tank here, coming into the inlet, into the main volume in this filter housing. It's gonna then go through the filter, thus filtering the fuel, and leave through this outlet. This is gonna go downstream to the high pressure fuel pump and ideally, this pressure is somewhere around 6.6, .6, but not exceeding 6.6 .6 bar. So you notice that nowhere in this fuel path does the fuel interact with the pressure regulator. The reason for that, or at least this is my theory, is the spring on the inside of this pressure regulator, it's pushing up against the back of this piston. There's an opening right here between the diaphragm and the piston shaft, and if the pressure is less than 6.6 .6 bar, that's gonna push all the way up to this plug and close off this hole. Therefore, no fuel can go in and get behind the plug and then go down the return line. So anything under 6.6 .6 bar, you're gonna get fuel from the tank, goes through the inlet, fills up this volume, but only exits out of the outlet. Now our next scenario is where our P filter 
is equal to or greater than 6.6 .6 bar. You're still gonna have your fuel coming in from the fuel tank into the inlet, into the main reservoir in this fuel filter housing. You're still gonna have the fuel go through the filter and you'll have fuel leaving the outlet as well. The difference between this scenario and the previous scenario is that now the pressure in this reservoir is pushing up against this diaphragm. It is my guess that they have the spring constant in here set such that once you hit 6.6 .6 bars of pressure in this area, it's going to push the diaphragm backwards, pushing the piston backwards, which will then allow fuel to come back through here into these openings in the pressure regulator housing around the plug and then down through the piston shaft. That will then go through the fuel return line and back to the fuel tank. This scenario only happens when the pressure in the filter exceeds the maximum pressure rating of this filter. As you provide another path for this fuel to escape from this filter volume, you're gonna be lowering the pressure. And then once the pressure is reduced to under 6.6 .6 bar, then that spring force is then strong enough to reclose the diaphragm and piston up against that plug, which restricts fuel from going down the return line. That's the two scenarios. The scenario that we're going to do calculations around is when the pressure in the filter equals 6.6 .6 bar. And I'm going to assume the pressure on the inside is exactly equal to the force being applied from the spring on the inside of the pressure regulator. So you've got pressure from the fuel pressing up against the diaphragm. You've got the spring force pressing the opposite way and those two forces are going to cancel out. So what we've got going on right now is our pressure inside the filter which is right here, pressure is equal to 6.6 .6 bar, which is the maximum pressure that's rated for this filter. Fuel in this area is gonna come through the holes in this pressure regulator housing, and this pressure is gonna be applied to the diaphragm in a, a uniform fashion we can actually figure out what this force is, or what force is being applied to the diaphragm. And the way we can do that is we know that pressure equals force over the area that that force is being applied. So if you rearrange that, we know that the force of the fuel equals the pressure times the area. Remember when I said that this diaphragm is an annular disc? meaning it's a circle with a small circle cut out of the middle of it, you'll have something that looks like this if you're looking straight on, which means you have a inside diameter and an outside diameter. I quickly did a very, very rough measurement of those, and I got 16 millimeters and roughly 3.2 millimeters for the inside diameter. So we'll take this quickly and we can find the area of this annulus by multiplying pi by the radius of this outer circle which would be eight millimeters minus pi multiplied by the radius of the inner circle squared and when you do this you are left with an area of 1.9 times 10 to the minus four meters squared. But we've got the area here. We can plug this area back into this formula. So we've got the force being applied by the fuel onto the diaphragm equals the pressure, which we know is 6.6 .6 bar times the area, which is 1.9 times 10 to the minus four meters squared. Note that your pressure units are in bar, so you actually have to convert that to Newton over meters squared. That conversion is um, 100,000 times your value, so this is then Newton over meters squared times 
1.9 times 10 to the minus 4. Your meters squared are going to cancel out, and you're going to be left with a uh, uh, answer or a, a, a final value in, in newtons. If I've done my calculations correctly, 126 newtons being applied to this diaphragm at equilibrium. And equilibrium is, is an important factor here because you remember we have this spring here. The spring is pushing on the inside of this piston, which then pushes on the inside of the diaphragm. So at equilibrium, when you have the forces on this side of the diaphragm and the forces on this side of the diaphragm equal, you know that the force of the spring equals the force of the fuel which we just figured out was 126 newtons. We now know that if a force exceeding 126 newtons, the pressure actually will compress this spring in, which will then allow fuel to come around this plug and make its way in through the hole in the diaphragm and then go down the hollow shaft of the piston, and that will exit in the fuel return. When enough fuel has left the main reservoir of the filter, that pressure will be reduced, so P filter will go down, spring force will overpower the fuel force, and it will then close this opening by forcing the diaphragm back up onto the plug. But we can actually go further and do a quick analysis on the actual spring. So the spring equals a spring constant times its linear displacement. And linear displacement, all that means is when the spring is in a relaxed state, what's that length? Then you subtract it from the current length, which would be this right here. So subtract that from here. And again, I did some very, very rough estimates of, of these two lengths. So the displacement we've got here is 10 millimeters or 0 0.01 meter. So if we have a spring force of 126 newtons at this condition, then we divide it by 0 0.01 meters. We get 12,600 newton over meter spring force. That's really the, the, the most I want to get into these calculations. I hope this helps you understand kind of the fundamentals of how this regulates pressure. Like I said, this is my theory. This is just from me opening this thing up and coming up with these equations and very simple equilibrium state. If you wanted to, you could definitely incorporate flow rates coming in, flow rates coming out. This whole thing is a variable based on pressure in here, and that would affect the flow rates of here. It's a lot of different differential equations that I don't want to get into. I am perfectly happy with the understanding that Essentially, this thing opens and closes to allow pressure to escape through the fuel return line. Not sure if anyone was actually interested in this. I know the reason I did it was because I was frustrated that I couldn't figure out how it worked. My biggest misconception was that I thought that this was the inlet and this was the return. So I couldn't figure out how fuel was coming in here, going straight through. Once I realized that, first of all, if you if you did that that the fuel wouldn't get filtered through the, the filter here once I realized that it was pretty easy to understand how it was how it worked but um, I wanted to go through some of the calculations so if you did enjoy this video go down and give it a like if you like this type of content consider subscribing to my channel if you have any questions comment in the comment section below as always thank you for watching and I will see you next time